Okay, so when we are multiplying radical expressions, there are kind of the, there are multiple ways that you can get to the final answer. And what I mean by that is technically, with that first problem, 2 square roots of 6 times 5 square roots of 12, there is some simplifying that we could do in the beginning. We can simplify the square root of 12. But I, I suggest that you not do that because um, you're going to end up having to simplify in the end. If you simplify at the beginning, I promise you you're going to have to simplify again, so you might as well just simplify all at once. Okay? You can, but you really don't need to simplify at the very beginning. So when you are multiplying radical expressions, you multiply the coefficients in front. So we're going to multiply the 2 times 5 to give us 10. Since those are both under a square root, we are going to multiply the numbers that are under the square root. So 6 times 12 is uh, 72. Then we want to simplify that expression. We want to simplify what's under the radical. So 72 would be 36 times 2, which is um, 10 times 6 times the square root of 2 which gives us a final answer of 60 times the square root of 2. Okay. So, same thing with the next example. As long as they are the same root, you can multiply them. Again, you can't mix square roots and cube roots um, or, or anything like that. So, as long as they are the same root, you can multiply them and you're good. Okay. So multiply the coefficients in front, negative 5 times negative 4 to give us positive 20. This is the sixth root. 4 times 3 is 12. Well, um, sixth root, the first one other than 1 to the 6, 2 to the 6 is like 1, uh, no, 64. It is 64. Uh, so 12 is definitely not divisible by 64. That's it. Okay, this, this was a one-step process. You didn't have to simplify the root in the end. Now, that's pretty simple. Well, you are going to be asked to multiply binomials that have radicals in them. Okay, for example, 2 square root of 3 minus the square root of 6 times the square root of 4 plus the square root of 2. Yes, we are going to have to FOIL, but let's make life just a little bit easier. I know I told you just a second ago not to simplify first, but if you have something in the problem that is a perfect square, aka square root of 4, that you can eliminate one of your radicals for, uh, go ahead and do it. Okay, go ahead and do it because it is going to make your life easier. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 2 square root of 3 minus the square root of 6 times 2 plus the square root of 2, because that way I have one less radical that I have to worry about. But yes, it is a binomial times a binomial, so we are going to have to FOIL. We just don't have any variables, we have square roots instead of variables. So we are going to multiply our first two terms. Again, the what we just did with multiplying applies right here. So 2 square root of 3 times 2 is going to be 4 square root of 3. The outside is positive. The coefficient in front is 2. The square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. The inside, we've got negative 2 square roots of 6. And then the last, we have a negative times a positive, so that's a negative. And the square root of 6 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 12. And there's always going to be simplifying to be done here. Obviously, we have plus 2 square roots of 6 minus 2 square roots of 6. So those are going to cancel out with each other. Uh, 4 square roots of 3 is as simplified as that piece gets. The square root of 12 simplifies to 2 square roots of 3. And do the intermediate step there. 
And so then 4 minus 2, they are the same root, so we can subtract their coefficients. So all of this boils down to 2 square roots of 3. Who would have thought that 2 square root of 3 minus the square root of 6 times the square root of 4 plus the square root of 2 is just the same as 2 square root of 3? Okay. Um, let's check it just in case you think it's too good to be true. Put it in parentheses. 2 square root of 3 minus the square root of 6. Be careful here, you need two sets of parentheses right there. One to close the square root of 6, one to close the first binomial. Uh, I'm pretty confident the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm not going to write that as the square root of 4. Um, and then I need to type in 2 square root of 3. Exact same decimal. Okay, those are equal. All right, now let's look at a special case of a binomial times a binomial. <clears throat> Relating this to factoring in some degree, what does that look similar to? Difference of perfect squares. Now what do we know is true about the difference of perfect squares? When we multiply it out, what always happens? The middle terms cancel. The outside and the inside cancels, okay? Um, and that's going to happen here. Now, for the sake of this example, I am going to work write it all out. Um, but I just wanted to, to see if you saw that <clears throat> because it does make life a little bit easier. You know what you're expecting the answer to look like, right? So 7 times 7 is 49. The outside gives us negative 35 square roots of 2. The inside gives us positive 35 square roots of 2. And I'm doing this also in case you mistakenly identify something as the difference of perfect squares when it's not. Okay, the last gives us positive 5 times negative 5, so that's negative 25. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2, well, that's the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so simplifying here, the outside and the inside cancel, the middle terms cancel. The square root of 4 is 2, so that's 25 times 2. Well, looky there, our radical completely disappeared, and this is just equal to 1, negative 1, negative 1. Again, who would have known? No, that was equal to negative 1. 